Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about why recipes don't matter or maybe they do and to show that I'm going to paint this unit this unit of chain rasps or well you're going to see one of them get painted and as a little quick backstory this is a unit of chain rasps of Miniac. Uh, Scott left these here when he was visiting during Vinicon and afterward I said well I'll paint them and he left me some instructions you can see those on the screen now and this is what they look like when he's done. I said, okay, fine. I said, well, I'm going to use this in a video then. And what I want to talk about is why we're all too addicted to recipes. But before I get into that, I'm going to just quickly mention when recipes do matter. And the most common question I get is, what color recipe did you use? And the reality is, it's almost always a question that I don't have a good answer for because there are so many different ways to use paints. So, when do they matter? When you're a new painter and you really have no idea what's going on, if we're talking about a very unusual pattern or set of colors or a color recipe that's extremely technical, like very highly processed non-metallic metal, or uh, if we're talking about a, some kind of technical paint, you know, like obviously if you've got typhus corrosion or something with pigment or something like that, that matters. But here's why they don't. Those are all fine, but in repainting these to match his army, I didn't have access to his paints. I didn't have access to how he painted them and how you paint matters. So as you can see here, I have my own methods for painting these guys. I started with the airbrush and glazed over the zenithal. I probably set my zenithal up different than he did. I, uh, when I want bright reds or something in this tone, uh, I go back and highlight in with white rather than trying to mix it and then I'm going to glaze over the top of it. So the thickness of the color, the method of application, do you wet blend it? Do you feather it? Do you two brush blend it, right? How do you go about that? That influences the color. So as you can see here, I started with this mix of red paints. I didn't have exactly what he used, so I just used my own reds. And then I went back in with some uh, cloudy sky, and then this is a little higher highlight of some glacier blue. So I'm adding a little bit of more color than he did because he used more flat white. But these are near enough, but they're gonna be more visually interesting. Sorry, Scott, you chose boring colors. I don't know what to tell you. And instead of mixing them, I'm applying these as a fairly thick layer, hitting the edges, and now I'm gonna come back in with a glaze through the airbrush. And when you use colors in different ways, they have a radically different look. Even the order of my application here mattered, right? The fact that I laid down a red and then laid down the white as a layer and then the glacier blue as a layer, or the deck I should say as a layer and then the glacier blue as a layer, and then glaze the red back over and then glaze the shadow on top, which is what I'm doing now, right? Taking a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in as my standard shadow color, my universal shadow color. You can find that in the top right corner right now. That's going to have a different effect, even if he had used the exact same colors, if he applies them in a different order. But it's also the number of applications, because I glazed each one of these three times, right? In a very thin glaze. And each time you, the way you change the order, each time you apply it, the number of times you apply it, that has an effect, right? Now, when it came to the cowls, again, I used roughly the same colors he did, slightly different, because again, I didn't have his exact paints. This is the list he sent me, so I had to work off of what it is. There's the list again, just to remind you. And... When I looked at this, I said, okay, these cloaks are effectively a great space for wet blending. They have these nice, big, open, flat areas that we need to get some highlight onto. So I started by just laying down a base coat of that dark sea blue, glazing a little black into the shadows. Then I laid down some new dark sea blue just to get the area wet. And then I started mixing in that same cloudy sky. I mean, I used maybe like five paints for this whole, this whole guy, right? Again, using the same colors for multiple things actually helps tie the mini together because then you have this, this effect of bringing everything into one place. 
But the fact that I chose to wet blend these colors, as opposed to how he might have chosen to apply it, maybe he chose to, uh, maybe he chose to layer it in a traditional sense. Maybe he chose to glaze it on there. Each of these would have a different look. So just saying, what's the recipe? What colors did you use? Means almost nothing to the final effect, right? The other thing you have to think about here is oftentimes I'll see people ask for recipes and then they'll change the colors around it. Oh, I really like how you did that cloak. What's the colors of that cloak? Like maybe you happen to like the way this cowl looks in the like dark sea blue within the cloudy sky or basically like a deck tannish color mixed in. It's going to have a different look if you put it next to a bright blue or a bright white than it does being contrasted by that red. Okay. The surrounding colors also influence your perception of the color itself. If you don't believe me, paint like a mid-tone gray and put it next to black and look how close to white it looks and then paint that same mid-tone gray and put it next to white and look how dark it looks, right? So even the surrounding element, what's on the base, what's there, can ultimately highly influence your perception of the color. So I'm not trying to, this isn't me raging against new people or somebody who isn't confident yet and isn't sure and who asks about recipes or brands. I get it, especially when you're starting out. Or if you, you see something that's like a very unique non-metallic metal and you wanna know what exact colors they use, because very, very technical paint jobs like that, often the exact paint does matter. But in most cases, if we're talking about some armor that's red or blue or whatever, it's like just pick some reds and blues and highlights and you'll be in the right area, right? Uh, because the nature of I could give you the exact paints, but because all these things are going to be different in how you apply them, you're not going to get the same effect as me. And to return back to what I'm saying here, if we look on the mini right now, you'll see how I'm applying the shadow with the same dark sea blue mixed into the white skin on the skin to us to, again, tie all these colors together. Now, I don't know if Scott did this or not, right? But I thought it sounded like a really good idea and a good way to shade that skin down and make it stand out. So I took that existing color and kind of glazed it in there. Again, maybe he did the same thing. Maybe he decided to layer it in there or do layers up on the skin. It would look completely different had I chosen that separate effect. Here on the stick, we're using the same base color, Rhinoxide, but he just puts down a quick base. I said, well, we can't do that. We got to highlight everything. Come on, what are we doing here, man? And so I did a nice quick little highlight with, again, the same cloudy sky, same highlight color I've used for everything else just mixed into the brown, here applying it as more or less a wet blended layer. Just a quick touch to get everything in line, right? And sometimes you can do things fast and easy, especially when it comes to like the haft of a weapon. Metals are another big one in looking very different depending on how you apply them. So we all know I'm a fan of Vallejo metal color and Scott used GW metals on his. So pff, that was right out, that was never happening. Uh, I'm going to use metal color. And when I apply my metals, I start from very, very dark. I never wash metals because washing metals generally makes them look bad. So I started with a little steel mixed with black ink. And then I just built up the metal from there. Right? And because I used a more traditional sort of layer metal where there's a very dark metal, then a mid-tone, and then a highlight into pure silver it's going to feel like a very different effect. I also glazed in some other colors, like some browns and some oranges into some of the shadows, just to give their weapons a slightly older feel, right? So, when I say recipes don't matter, I don't mean to dissuade you from understanding what paints people used. What I want to do is free you to understand that it's only the beginning of the process to understand the paints that are used there. The real challenge is in how you, in your own personal style, decide to use those paints. Painting with the same colors 
is 10% of the journey to achieving a look like something you want. The technical method of how you apply it, how thick it is, how you choose to blend it, the order you choose to apply it with, whether or not you varnish everything out, how many applications you do, what colors surround it, right? All of these different elements highly affect the recipe. So there you go. I know this one will be a little controversial. I do welcome your thoughts down below. I've been wanting to do this for a while uh, just to give you my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed this little talk as we paint this little night hot boy. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hoppy cheating in the future. And as always, thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.